Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. Right, so Ben Foster has come out recently and described how vicious the hair dryer treatment was from Sir Alex Ferguson. So let's have a look. Let's go through every year from Fergie's last decade at Old Trafford and try and pinpoint, just try and guess, who would have received the biggest post-match dressing room rollicking every goddamn year. I'm guessing being shouted at by Fergie is about as much fun as baking your face in grease. 2001 Fabian Barthes. Lads, it's Tottenham. Yep, yeah, this is what Sir Alex Ferguson thought of Spurs. Just this feeble mid-table club who Man United should be swatting aside with ease Probably because of games like this, this wouldn't be the last time Tottenham chucked away a healthy lead against Man United in the Premier League, crumbling the minute a bit of pressure gets put on them. It's September 2001 and Man United are trading 3-0 at halftime in White Hart Lane. Considering the visitors went out and smashed down five unanswered goals in the second half, Yet imagine Fergie must have delivered one hell of a halftime speech. Most teams would be paralysed in fear by an intimidating manager's volcanic eruptions. For Christ's sake, half the Ipswich team are probably still frozen in fear 10 years on from Roy Keane. But this United side were galvanised by this. And yeah, I'd imagine someone like Fabian Barthez was absolutely brutalised at halftime. Fergie probably threatened him with an expulsion from the country if he made one more mistake. 2002 Gary Neville. Oh good Christ, Gary Neville. This was an utterly horrific Derby Day showing. Remember that iconic footage of Neville blatantly ignoring Peter Schmeichel in the tunnel for a Derby Day match? Whether this was Gary playing up to the camera or simply holding a vendetta against his former teammate for daring to join the rivals, hey, it might even have been just an attempt to get his concentration ready. Yeah, he needn't have bothered, because the next 90 minutes were arguably the worst of his career. And this was a guy who backpassed into his own net for England. It's the same fellow who had his career ended by Jerome Thomas, but in November 2002, United travelled to Main Road to get humiliatingly smashed 3-1, with Neville gifting Sean Goder a goal, tied off with a nice little bow. From this position, there is no danger, just let it go for a goal kick. But no, he inexplicably keeps it in, allowing Goder to score and City win the game. That's the face of a man who knows he's about to get absolutely ripped apart by his manager. And yes, he was dropped for the next two games. 1003 David Beckham. Okay, with this one we don't have to guess. For Christ's sake, Fergie kicked an actual boot in his face. I'm pretty sure that classifies as the hair dryer treatment. It was after an FA Cup fifth round defeat at Highbury in February 2003 and Fergie was furious with David Beckham's positioning for Arsenal's second goal. But let's be honest, this was a long time coming. The manager was already worried about his number seven's fondness for the limelight. The fact he was marrying a world famous pop star, his face being splashed on the front pages of every newspaper in town, even his children's names were attention seeking to the extreme. Calling your newborn Romeo was arguably child abuse. He'd probably have baptised him in a public toilet if it got him a front page headline. Anyway, this all boiled over at Highbury, ending with Fergie kicking a boot into his face and Beckham winding up at Real Madrid within six months. Apparently Beckham was so enraged following this bust up that his wife actually threatened to confront Fergie herself. Yeah, that's one way to get his respect, have your wife fight your battles for you. Send in a wound up Spice Girl to yell at him. Christ above. 1004 Tim Howard. Oh, I would not like to have been Tim Howard during the spring of 2004. Sure, the lad was playing for the biggest clubs on planet Earth, earning thousands of pounds a week, but Christ above, he'd probably have had to put three months worth of wages to the lifetime supply of therapy he needed to recover from Sir Alex Ferguson's vicious tongue. During April 2004, Howard had already cost Man United a Champions League run, fumbling Benny McCarthy's last minute free kick to put Porto through. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure he was probably ripped to pieces in the dressing room, but Ferguson gave him one more chance at the Manchester Derby. Q a 4-1 defeat against a bang average City team. Howard was hideously terrible. Was even lobbed by Sean Wright Phillips in the last minute. I'm guessing Ferguson almost drowned him in the dressing room toilet. Probably threatened to banish him back to Metro Stars. But nah, instead he just dropped him for the next five games. That was in the five Cristiano Ronaldo. Yep, Cristiano Ronaldo was the golden child at Manchester United. But even he got his rollickings. Apparently in December 2005, after Man United lost a must-win game out in Benfica to finish rock bottom of the Champions League group, Ronaldo, the future five-time Ballon d'Or winner, was reduced to tears in the dressing room. Apparently Fergie accused the 20-year-old of playing for himself. Hmm, where would he have got that impression? His failure to actually cross the ball? His countless step-overs? United needed a hero out on that pitch to keep them in Europe. Ronaldo just spent an hour performing as if he was some kind of circus freak, desperately trying to impress the Portuguese fans back in his homeland. He was so bad. So ineffective. He was actually dragged off for Jisung Park in 67 minutes. And this was a must win game. Fergie must have felt like smacking his head off the radiator. He probably unloaded, chucking out every insult he could find, told him he was overrated, a show pony, that his teeth made him look like a horse on smack. Anything, anything at all to try and make the penny drop. 1006 Rio Ferdinand. So apparently Fergie used to pick and choose who could take his hair dryer treatments and who couldn't. For example, had he chosen to berate Nanny, a lad with all the backbone of a paraplegic panda, this lad would have probably started crying on the spot. It's, it's a bit like yelling at a small child. I would imagine Rio Ferdinand though, a change room loudmouth with a strong personality. I reckon Fergie knew he could take it. So what do you think he did after a 4-3 defeat at Ewood Park in February 2006? This was the game where Rio spent the game marking Robbie Savage in midfield and wound up embarrassing himself. Christ, at first glance, you'd swear it was Jar Jar Binks in the middle of the park. He was directly responsible for David Bentley's second goal after a defensive mix-up with Edwin van der Sar. I say defensive mix-up, Rio literally headed the ball back over his own goalie. Christ, you'd swear he left his brain in a toaster. Then on 87 minutes with United chasing 
releasing an equalizer. Ferdinand just chucks their hopes in a bit, stupidly slicing through Stavage to get sent off. Listen, I'm sure Fergie spent about an hour screaming into his face. Hell, he probably continued on the bus ride home. Christ up, it's 14 years later and he's probably still angry about it now. 2007, Jared Piquet. This was the moment which ended Jared Piquet's career in English football. It's November 2007 and a 20-year-old Spanish kid gets spat into Man United's back line for a wintry trip to Bolton. A daunting task for any centre half, but for a ball-playing Catalan La Mesia product, a man brought up on Tiki Taka Pasamu football, suddenly confronted with Big Sam tactics, defending long balls and Kevin Nolan elbows on a snowy afternoon at the Reebok. It must have felt like a different sport. Anyway, a free kick is chipped into the box, PK completely misses his header, allowing Nicholas and Elka to thump home the only goal of the game. This was a result which put them three points off Arsenal at the top of the league. Ferguson was also sent off by the referee for a tunnel outburst. So what sort of mood do you think he was in after this game? He probably felt like punching the kid square in the face, cancel his contract on the spot, cut off his toes and feed them to a hungry cow. Yeah, in the last decade, PK has gone on to lift 30 trophies of Mario Popstar, but he probably still wakes up in the dead of night reliving the afternoon dressing down in Bolton. 1008 Thomas Kuchak. Ever wondered what Sir Alex Ferguson's reaction would be to a fellow human being if he single-handedly cost him the chance of a treble? That's a feat Ferguson only managed once in his four decades of management. So when Thomas Kuchak sent the chance of a second one happening up in flames, oh, he probably felt like burning down his house. An eye for an eye sort of thing. It was an epic up quarterfinal home to Portsmouth. Pompey had not won at Old Trafford in over half a century. It was a game this club should have won with their eyes closed. For Christ's sake, the visitors had John Utaka on the wing. That's almost like starting with a stale lump of bread stuffed out wide. Kuchak, the second choice goalie, replaced the injured Edmund van der Sar at half time, then concedes a penalty against sent off, leaving Rio Ferdinand having to step in and try and save the spot kick. He didn't. United were dumped out of the cup and Kuchak returning to the change room after the game. It must have been like a pig willingly stepping into the goddamn slaughterhouse. That was online Ben Foster. According to Ben Foster, he was absolutely crucified after Manchester United victory. Yep, that 4-3 last gasp Derby Day win. A 26-year-old Foster had a shocking afternoon in goal. Conceding the first goal after trying to dribble past Carlos Tevez, good lord. Fair enough, the second goal was unstoppable with Craig Bellamy bulleting into the top corner but the third, oh wow. Goalkeeping and aptitude at its finest. Last minute, Bellamy bags the equaliser to make it 3-3, with Foster collapsing like a house of cards to concede at his near post, an almost sackable offence in the goalkeeping world. Apparently Fergie tore him apart in the dressing room, threatening to kick him out of the club if he ever did that again. He's lucky Michael Owen at least salvaged the win, because had this display cost the club points, Fergie would have probably had him murdered at dawn. That was in 10 Gary Neville. Were I a Man United player, who managed to lose 4-0 at bottom club West Ham in the League Cup, allowing Jonathan Spector to score twice, I probably wouldn't have bothered returning to the dressing room. Instead, just change my name and leave the country. It's not worth Worth it. Fergie probably felt like making them all strip naked and walk through the town centre, allowing the fans their chance to shout shame, shame. But I'm gonna go for that 3 3 draw at Goodison Park in September, where United conceded two goals in stoppage time to chuck two points down the toilet. That was a final 10 minutes where Gary Neville was all over the shop. Look at the space he's given away in the final seconds. They could have lost this one because of him. Anyway, this was the last time he played 90 minutes for the club. He was instantly dropped. What do you think happened in the dressing room? 2011 Johnny Evans. I could have gone for Rio Ferdinand again. Here he was two weeks after his 33rd birthday with his lack of pace badly exposed during that crushing 6-1 home derby day to defeat the Man City. This was a complete embarrassment. It was Fergie's worst ever day in football. But ripping apart Rio in the aftermath, it would have been a bit pointless. It was like shouting at a dying horse. This guy was aging. It happens. I'd say the real wrath was saved for the 23-year-old Johnny Evans, arguably the most responsible man for this debacle since he was sent off within two minutes of the second half restart. He was almost instantly dropped from the team. 2012 Raphael. Yeah, another episode of Manchester United stupidly gift wrapping points for David Moyes. This was essentially the game which cost Man United the league title. 4-2 up and cruising against Everton at home in April 2012. And then they chucked it away, drawing 4-4. A ridiculous scoreline when you're fighting for the league title. The Brazilian right back Rafael had an afternoon to forget. So bad he might have considered a change of career that night. Didn't get tight to Nikita Jelovic for the first goal. Allowed Nara Fellaini to bully him for the fourth. He was then instantly dropped to the bench for the Eddie Derby. Was allowed two minutes on the pitch against Swansea and absolutely no minutes during the win at Sunderland. He still wasn't forgiven by August, sitting out the opening day trip to Goodison Park with Ferguson not daring to let him act Fellaini ever again. I mean, it didn't matter, he still scored the winner. 2013 Danny Welbeck. Here's a story. After Man United lost the derby at Old Trafford in April 2013, despite being a week off title glory, apparently Fergie absolutely lost in the dressing room. According to Robin Van Persie, he stuck photos of two players caught parting the night of the game, slap bang in the middle of the dressing room, making an example of them and blaming them. The names were never revealed, but I say, what player in the Man United dressing room loves to party? Yeah, I think we all agree it was probably Danny Welbeck. Anyway, that's the end of it, lads. What do you think? Let me know any other players who probably deserved a rollicking from Fergie. Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.